I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we're going to be covering a couple of topics. We're going to do a really short little talk about microplastics because one of my viewers noticed that our water comes in plastic bottles, so we're going to touch on that just a little bit. And then we're going to be talking, our main topic is about if you're coming to Nicaragua, and the person who asked the question is coming for a month, we're going to ask, should they be looking at staying in Managua or should they branch further afield? We're going to get to all that right after the book. Welcome back on a beautiful day. I'm waiting for Pedidos Jaw to deliver my food. And no, I'm not sponsored by them, but I ordered from three different places today. So I have a bu some of the foods already arrived and I'm getting a video out. A couple people had questions or comments and it was a good time to get some uh, videoing out because I'm trying really hard this weekend to get caught up on the show because we fell very far behind. Some of you know we had some stuff going on and we had a wedding yesterday and it just, it set us a bit behind on making the show. So I'm working really hard to at least start a little bit of catch up. But we're working on that and I'm traveling to the United States and Mexico in just six weeks I have to be in Mexico so I got to get caught up in that time I got to be on top of things we're working on it okay so first microplastics look I get it this is a real concern you don't want to have plastics in everything in the world that's terrible but we have to deal with reality and the comment was you know ah they don't care about microplastics and I have no idea if it was tongue-in-cheek but based on seeing that we have all of our water is stored in plastic jugs and then it goes through a plastic water dispenser so the first thing is it doesn't matter what your opinion is this is the choice we have here so if you're gonna live in Nicaragua your water is gonna come in plastic that is it there is no other supply so that is a known now if that's a thing that is a major problem for you or whatever then that's gonna be potentially a show stopper, right? You can have well water, you can do your own filtration, you can do any of that stuff, but that is how water is done here. There aren't like tons of different water suppliers where you can choose from. One comes in glass, one pumps in a pipe, one, you know, comes from a, who knows, they have some tank they fill. I don't know what options there would be. I don't know what options there are in other countries, but here in Nicaragua, we have these giant five gallon, uh, I think, uh, bottles of water and that is how water comes and it doesn't matter what water supplier you call because there are private ones and there's the big national one i guess they're private too but there's the big national one it's all the same bottles they're interchangeable more or less so that is just something that is how your water is going to come that's not going to change once you have the water in those bottles, which everyone has, then you need to dispense it. The normal cheap everywhere dispenser that you get at the poly is just a little plastic thing. You just turn it upside down, the water pours into that, and it's got a little plastic spigot, and your water comes out. This works really well, it's very cheap, it's effective. What we have is an igloo system, so you put the water in, and then it goes into a holding tank, which I don't believe is plastic, that either chills, heats the water, or just passes it through, and you get your water that way. I was showing that because we really like having that and sorry for the bird, he's now taken to whenever I'm out here filming that he thinks it's the perfect time to make noise. Uh, and so this is how we get our water. And I totally appreciate the idea that all this plastic has negatives in it. And that's true, it does, but we don't have an alternative. And it's very important, if you look at the research, there isn't any solid research on microplastics being a problem for human health. There's good reason to believe why it would be. There's good reasons to want to avoid it, because just because we don't know something is bad, we can hypothesize that it makes sense that it's bad. There's no reason to believe that plastics aren't bad for you. They probably are. That's, that's a really safe assumption. But we, they're not bad enough that we can measure or determine how they're bad yet. And there's so many things in our environment that we do know are bad that we often can't avoid or are not avoiding or just don't care about that to worry about microplastics um, when you have no easy way to avoid it is not, it just doesn't work. You can't be concerned. I've never had someone mention it before, right? And when you're talking about like, should I get bottled water versus tap water in the United States? Yeah, then you start talking about it because you're talking about these bottles you don't need. You leave them out in the sun. There's like all these different, like, yeah, I get that. But like this, this new thing with like, oh, we're gonna get all these thermoses and carry things around in glass. It's the most ridiculous thing and it doesn't apply here. Can't use that, right? You wanna have that after you take it out of the bottle? Fine. So a couple major things. One is our water supply uh, has to come in these. We don't have other ways to truck it around. Um, we do have city water, but here in colonial cities, be aware, you're dealing with pipes that can be hundreds of years old. So there can be contaminants and pollutants in that from the piping system. They are ancient and we try not to use it. Of course it's safe if you need to like, you, know, you brush your teeth, you're gonna, you know, oh, I'm thirsty. 
People in the slums drink it all the time because it's the only option they have. It's basically free. It is treated, but it's going through an old piping system. So if you're in Managua, it's one thing, like drink that, no problem. But in the colonial cities, think twice about using it as your regular water supply. The biggest concern is things like heavy metals leaching into the water. And yes, having it once in a while, no problem at all. But if you're drinking it all the time, you need to have your water tested because you don't know if you're going to be building up something that you shouldn't be getting in your system, such as lead or mercury, right? We don't expect to find those in the system. I don't know that they're in the system, but I do know these pipes are really ancient and you don't use them. Now here, we're not on city water. We're on well water here. So we could pull from the well and drink that. But the wells uh, in this area, because we're very near the beach are not super deep and you can get contamination in the wells. We don't generally, we have a good well, but at times you might get less than ideal water. And even when it's great, it doesn't taste the best. So you don't generally want to use it for your drinking water. Again, you can, but it's untreated. It's just a well. So that's fine, but Normally, you're going to drink bottled water. There are reasons why people put in the effort to drink the bottled water, water even when most of the city taps and everything are healthy. It's just, it's what people do, right? Spring water tastes a little bit better than treated city water or whatever. So while we don't have problems like Montezuma's Revenge, we don't have problems like Flint, Michigan, we don't have problems like Mississippi, we, you know, not all tap water is perfect either, and there's a reason why people want bottled water. So that is the system we have. One of the things that Nicaragua does is basically all those bottles that you see are getting reused. Not little like I go and get like a 20 ounce water at the store. Those, you know, maybe getting recycled, but it's the same as the US. Mostly everything goes to a landfill or gets shipped off somewhere. But when you're getting the big five gallons, when you're getting beers at the at the store, whatever, that is nearly 100% reuse. Not just recycling, but reuse. They have cleaning facilities that go back and clean all that stuff so they don't have to remanufacture because we can't manufacture here in the country. There's no plastic manufacturing, there's no glass manufacturing. So all of that stuff, we have to reuse it to save money, protect the environment, all that stuff. So we're doing a lot to keep plastics out of the ocean, right? The actual amount of plastic, but we're not generating plastic and we're trying really hard to reuse it. So from a microplastics in the ecology, in the environment perspective, Nicaragua is doing a really good job. From a microplastics in your body perspective, my guess is that we're getting less of that than you would in a normal lifestyle in the United States. Maybe it's about the same. Possibly it's a little bit higher, but I don't know how it would be uh, given the, the overall lack of exposure to plastic that we have compared to the U.S. But it's easily comparable. But you're only talking comparable. I don't know anyone who's actually able to avoid a certain amount of plastic exposure in any of these markets until you're living off the grid and pulling your own well water and doing nothing but filtration and filtering using systems that we don't normally see because most of those are plastic too, right? Until you're doing some extreme amount of stuff, there's going to be water flowing through plastic somewhere along the system. And is that unfortunate? Yes, it is. I agree, right? But it's not something we can be worrying about Right. And we commonly get this of people coming from the U.S. and being like, oh, there's this thing you could be doing even better. Why aren't you worried about it? And it's like, is that why would we prioritize that? Right. Does that make sense to prioritize? No, I don't think so, because we've got all these other things like one, we've already improved you know, worry about the U.S., right? Like w where people might have more choices and there's more plastic and they're remanufacturing. They're not reusing in most cases. Like work on that stuff, work on the big volume. This is, we're mostly using cast off small bottles, right? Like it's, it's seriously a low impact. We got to do something and this is the option presented to us. But even if there were other options, I don't know what they would reasonably be. So I'm interested, what, what are people doing that involves getting water delivered to them that doesn't have plastic in it, that actually works that you can deal with day in, day out? That's a real question. I wanna know what this alternative is that's being imagined for those who are, are imagining it. Like if we could just magically snap our fingers and not have plastic problems, I'm with you 100%. If you're coming to Nicaragua and you're coming here to stay for a while, maybe a week or two or a month, maybe even more, there are basically three camps of people. Those who automatically think they have to go to San Juan del Sur because it's the only thing they've seen advertised online. Those who want to go to Managua because they just imagine that anytime you go to a country, you go to the big capital city, and that's just where you start your adventure. If you're going to the United Kingdom, of course, it would be normal to start your adventures in London, and you may not go very far afield uh, in many cases. So that would make sense. If you're coming to the United States, starting in New York or LA, or maybe Chicago would make a lot of sense as well. And then there's a third camp, those that don't want to be around tourists and so automatically avoid San Juan del Sur, and those that are familiar with, with Managua as not being a very 
very touristy place, so it's not famous for being a beautiful city, and so they automatically avoid Managua because it is where for better or for worse, the majority of crime in the country happens in Managua. So a lot of people are fearful of it or feel that it's not a very nice or interesting city, not a very beautiful city, and so they avoid it for those reasons. So the majority of people that we see that really want to get to know Nicaragua have a tendency to actually completely avoid Managua to a point where many people never see it. And I'll be honest, I was in this camp by accident in 2015 when I first moved here. I moved to Granada, and the entire time we lived here, we never went to Granada. I walked to Masaya, but never went into Managua other than going to and from the airport. We went to Chinandega, to Leon, to Matagalpa, to Hinotega, to San Juan del Sur, to Rivas, to Ometepe, to Hinotepe, to Didiamba. We went to a lot of places but we never went to Managua. The first time I ever actually spent a night in Managua was 2021 at the beginning of the year when Paul and I came down and were dealing with lawyers here. Before that, even on my trip in 2019, flew into the airport at Managua, but immediately headed off to San Juan del Sur, then to Granada, and then back to the airport. So I lived here in 2015, avoided Managua, visited extensively in 2019, avoided Managua, came down in 2021 and did my first trip was to Managua and it was a bit eye-opening. It was my first time really seeing the city. It was just over three years ago. So, uh, that, so I fell into that camp. So I totally appreciate the people who are like, why would you ever go to Managua? What's the reason for that? But I also understand why it may seem like that's the obvious place that you want to go and why would you ever look anywhere else? It's the main city, right? Okay, so Managua is a special animal, and it's, it's I don't know any other country that is like this in the region. If you're going to Panama, Panama City is going to be your hub. If you're going to San Jose, I'm sorry, if you're going to Costa Rica, San Jose is going to be your hub. In uh, Honduras, either Tegucigalpa or San Pedro Sula is going to be your hub, but almost certainly Tegucigalpa because of San Pedro Sula's history, although it's up and coming, it's got a lot of potential. El Salvador, San Salvador. Guatemala, we get a different one. Most people hub out of Antigua, not Guatemala City. This is for expats. Right. If you're and tourist, if you're a local, then obviously Guatemala City being the big city is the main hub. So all those countries, they have this big central city kind of mentality. Uh, but here in Nicaragua, we absolutely don't in most cases. So it's just it's just a different animal completely. Managua, having been liquefied during the uh, the earthquake of 1972, lacks the core downtown. And we talk about this a lot. It doesn't have what you expect out of a normal tourist capital city. And while it has a lot of resources like restaurants, shopping, transportation, uh, good amounts of housing, it really has extremely few tourists. And as a percentage as a ratio, the number of expats is extremely low compared to other cities. This is not what you expect at all. In England, if you said, well, London doesn't have very many visitors, but you get a lot in Manchester or Liverpool, people would be like, say, what now? There's no way that's true. And here in Nicaragua, if you said the equivalent, right, that you're getting all the tourists around in Leon and Granada, suddenly people are like, well, yeah, of course. But why? Right. So the old cities, they had just have tourist infrastructure. They have tourist uh, things to go see. Right. They're in with the volcanoes. They've they've got the lakes. They've got the tourist um, uh, hotels and, and old colonial cities and things to see. Just whatever. Managua lacks the infrastructure around this. And so uh, it's it's hard to describe exactly what Managua is like until you live there. So partially it's deciding what your goals are. If your goals are to see Nicaragua as kind of a tourist place, then you're gonna to wanna to spend time mostly away from Managua. Not that you should avoid Managua, but what do you actually plan to see and do there is often a question that people need to answer. And quite often the answer is, I have no idea. I just assumed everything would be in Managua. And the reality is, is very little is. Now, to be fair, I grew up in Rochester, New York. And if you look at Rochester, it's a, what we call a ring city. The city center, the downtown area, the thing that's actually the city of Rochester, has a relatively low population, almost nothing to do, and is very, very dangerous. But the towns around, directly around the center of the city, are actually heavily populated, full of things to do, and a really beautiful area. So it actually has a dip of everything in the middle of the city, but not too far out, there is a lot of activity outside the inner loop, or what used to be the inner loop outside the loop of, of Interstate 490. Here in Nicaragua, it's not that different. The cities that are relatively close to Managua, but outside of Managua, actually tend to have the majority of the activity. The Granadas, the Leones, the Messiahs, even the Madagalpas, that's where the activity of the country tends to be happening. It's where the events happen, it's what people think of, of things. Of course, if you're going to a uh, conference or a government activity, 
activity or something like that, that's going to be Managua. If you needed to use the airport, that's Managua. But mostly people fly in and immediately get out of the city. That is not to say that you don't want to stay in Managua. If your goal is to move to Nicaragua and you want to evaluate places you want to live, then you want to evaluate the ones that are most likely to make sense for you. And Managua could be a place that makes sense for you. I know some of my viewers and some people who have moved down absolutely love living in Managua, and that's what they choose uh, to go to. But it's really important. The majority, not a lot, but a majority of the people who move to Nicaragua do not consider Managua, even though it's the major city, to be the place that they want to be. It's also worth noting that a lot of them avoid it without ever giving it a fair shake, and they avoid it for bad reasons, right? Well, I heard it was dangerous, so I never went there. And again, I'll fall into that camp. That's what happened to me for a while. Now that I've been there, I say, wow, I actually would have liked living in Managua a lot more than Granada. It'd been a very different experience. I still prefer Leon, but Managua would and still is a city I would seriously consider if that was a place I needed to go. I love the access to resources. I love how easy it is to get around with public transportation. I like that it's in the center of the country and easy to get to other places really easily. There's just, I used easily a little bit too much there, but it's, it's a very accessible city. Um, and, and the prices are quite good. And there's a lot of bars and a lot of nightlife. And, and I like Managua quite a bit. So when you're looking at whether you should come down and go to Managua, you really have to consider what it is that you want. If you're looking for a place where you have the convenience of a lot of big shopping, um, you're okay with a lot of traffic, you want to be in a big city, more than a million, um, where you're, you're dealing with a more urban infrastructure, but it is not, remember, urbane. This is not a Tegucigalpa, this is not a San Salvador, this is not a Panama City. This is still a very, like, giant village feel feeling kind of place, even though it's big and sprawling and has 1.3 million people. It never feels really like a city. No matter where you go, you're always going to be like, it just, it just doesn't have that city vibe, and it doesn't. But it does have a lot of people, and so the resources and things of a city are there. And we come from all over the country, pretty much no matter where you live in the country, you will use Managua. Either you will go to Managua yourself and use it as a resource, or you will send people to Managua as a resource. But basically the country doesn't get big enough that we don't use it as our hub for logistics and shopping and things like that. Just like England still uses London, even when you're pretty far afield, even Liverpool sometimes uses London for things, even though it's that far away. So that's, that's really what it's like here. In Managua, you can find quaint neighborhoods, beautiful housing, expensive mansions, cheap apartments, everything is available somewhere. And you have outlying suburbs that can be very nice as well, although some of them get a really bad rap like Ciudad Sandino. I actually like it. I find it a very nice area. But you also have very ritzy suburbs like Santo Domingo. And so you can pick and choose a lot of different things. But it can be difficult, especially if you're not staying in Managua for a really long time, to be able to get a feel for the city. Even living there for a month or so may not allow you to scratch the surface, and that can be, I don't want to say dangerous, but it can be uh, challenging to make any kind of informed opinion about Managua or Nicaragua in general if you're in Managua, I feel, because if you go to a place like Granada or Leon, you have a tendency to be able to get to know your city. It's, they're much smaller, um, but enough that you're able to figure out resources, figure out how to do things, get a feel for what uh, life is like, travel to other places, and kind of assemble a picture of, of what the country is like. This is my opinion. This is definitely a, a very, you know, sometimes things are like, here's how it works, and this is not at all, right? This is I'm kind of giving you my impression, um, and, and maybe other people have, have tried this differently and had better results. Um, and then if you're staying in Managua, I feel like you spend so much of your time Initially, like if you're going to live there, like you, you got to do this, um, but you, you're going to spend so much of your time trying to figure out the little neighborhood that you're in and then trying to figure out how it connects to Managua and then figuring out the logistics of Managua. And that takes time. And if you're only here for, you know, a vacation or you're here for a month kind of scouting things out, I think you'll almost certainly get extremely bogged down in the Managua city life in trying to figure out and get your brain wrapped around Managua. And a month, for example, which is what the, the question is, this is Bo Long asked the question, um, I don't think a month is enough time to really understand Managua. And when I talk to people who start in Granada or start in Leon, if they're ambitious at all, uh, they're very quickly like, oh yeah, I know, I saw all these other things in the country. And when you start in Managua, almost universally, it's, I never actually ventured out and got any idea of what, what Nicaragua is like. I only know this really limited little bit of Managua. And it's like, okay, well, you learn something about this really limited area, but do you have any scope of like what the country's like, what travel's like? And I think for the majority of people, 
uh, you know, if you're on vacation, you got to see the thing you like to see. But if you're if you're here wanting to learn about the country and evaluate things, um, you want to be traveling between cities because you want to understand how cities start and stop and what the countryside is like, what suburbs are like. And you only get that by traveling in and out and going through them and, and kind of piecing things together. And you want to know a bigger scope of land, right? You want to know what the hot western portion is where we are, what the cooler, rainier mountain region like Matagalpa and Hinotega is like. You want to know what the tourist centers like Granada are like, or the places with attractions. And you want to know what the lake is like. You, you want to see these things. And, and being in Managua, you're almost certainly going to be so busy trying to figure out just how Managua works and what it is that you can lose all focus and be here for a really long time and be like, I, I never really got a handle on Managua and now I forgot that I haven't evaluated the rest of the country. So I actually just talked to someone who's looking at buying in a small part of Managua, having not even explored Managua yet, and having no idea what the rest of the country is like. Of course, they can, you know, they can watch a show and get a bunch of assumptions like, oh, that looks nice, that looks nice, but I think I want to be here. And I totally understand, like, you stumble on the perfect place, you want to buy the perfect place. I get it, but... Only in Managua do I ever get, or in San Juan del Sur, that's a little bit different because it's an enclave. Outside of the enclaves, it is unique to Managua where we get this small group of people who just go there and like never realize the rest of Nicaragua is out there. And I'm not saying, because it's definitely not true. If you had a really good scope of all of Nicaragua, Managua remains a really good choice for you. It has a lot to offer. It is a nice city. I would be fine living there, no problem at all. So I'm not knocking the choice at all. But I think as a as a place to go to discover the country, to get a feel for the country, to be excited about things to do and whatever, I think Managua is challenging. If you want to see Managua, and you probably should, uh, you want to get to know other areas a little bit first, in my opinion. Start in Leon, start in Granada, get those under your belt to be like, okay, I know how to get around. I know how to go to the grocery store. I've got a few restaurants I'm comfortable with. I have an idea of like what people do. I go to the bar. Like, okay, cool. I got this local scope. I want to see another place. Don't do Managua next, right? Do a Messiah, do a Leon, do a Matagalpa, do a Rivas. And then... Once you have like two places and you're like, okay, I see how this one compares to this one. I see the things that are alike and the things that are different. And that's, and I've seen the countryside between, I'm getting a little bit of a picture of what Nicaragua is. Then if you want to go see Managua, I think it makes a lot more sense because Managua is just such a unique creature on its own, even within Nicaragua, that you don't want to mistake what is Managua for what is Nicaragua. And you need those, those contextual pieces to be able to apply it to Managua in a way that you don't need it for Granada, you don't need it for Leon. I think it's much more obvious what is the city and what isn't and like how it fits in and just everything. And you're not gonna fly into those cities. Managua, you can fly in and never see the countryside, never see anything. Um, and then it's tempting to be like, oh yeah, Nicaragua is this little tiny place. And it's not, it's a, it's a good sized country, but you gotta see more than Managua. So I don't know, I don't have a really perfect answer, but in general, for Bo Long, who specifically asked the question, I'm coming to Nicaragua for a month, I was thinking of just staying in Managua. I would say if there's one place not to stay for a month, it's Managua. Unless you've done your homework and your homework suggests that Managua is the perfect city for you versus the other cities. Like you've looked at the factors that exist and you've decided that, or maybe you have family here or there's some specific thing. You're coming down to work with some business or hospital and that's where they are. Okay, different, right? In those cases, you know it's Managua you want to go to. But if you're in a more open situation where you're like, I don't know, I heard of Managua and I haven't heard of Messiah. So I figured Managua is the place to start. I would say, no, it probably isn't. Um, one of the other cities is going to be the place to start. Which one? One, that depends on what you're looking for, what you want to do. Uh, but if you're going to be a tourist and you just want to do tourist things, no, Managua is not going to be the worst choice. It's one of the worst. If you're coming here to decide on where to live, unless you can determine ahead of time that Managua makes sense, I'm going to say it's it's one of the lesser places to seriously consider. Um, you almost always want to start in Granada because it gives you the, the tourist infrastructure, kind of eases you into Nicaragua more than anywhere else. Um, and then when you want to branch out, uh, most likely Leon, Messiah, uh, Matagalpa, and Esteli are your four major contenders for that next city to try to explore. Of course, if you spend time and you live in Granada for you know a month and you test out some places, you may easily find a different place that's calling your name, that's fine. Um, but it, as you build up, it's it's easier to kind of have this context of where do I want to go? What do I want to what do I want to see? And of course, once you've done a little bit, then Managua may fall into that and and that would be great. But you really got to be dedicated to exploring. I think in in Managua and because it, it's so much is because it doesn't have a city center 
and nothing guides you to things. It takes so long to learn how the neighborhoods connect to each other, how to get around the city, where the things you want to go are. You could spend an entire month just trying to figure out where the bar district that you want to go to is or how to find restaurants that you like. For those of us that live here, we build this up over time. I build up my picture of Managua over a really long amount of time. I'll be on Instagram and I'll see a new restaurant open. Oop, add that. We'll talk about it. We'll look at their menus. We'll see pictures. And then at some point we're in, in Managua and it's like, okay, where is this restaurant compared to where we are? Okay, let's go check out this new place, right? And we, we slowly, because we already know, okay, we know we want to try out this restaurant today and we're going to be in Managua. Let's put that together. But if you're sitting in Managua and you're like, okay, I got to find a restaurant tonight. How do you do that? Right? I don't know. Right. Like I, you, you got to have like this list of places you've already selected or you're going to just be like, well, I know this plaza is down the street or it's going to drive randomly around the city. And the, trust me, it's a hard city to drive around randomly. And once you get really used to it. Yeah, of course you can. But you're, you're adding complications. And if you don't have your own car, what are you going to do? Jump in a taxi and be like, hey, just take me somewhere. Right. It is hard. It is challenging. Um, if you you know, when I go to Tegucigalpa, for example, which is a very non touristy city, uh, just a few hours away in, in Honduras. Uh, but it's a bigger city. I go downtown, I stay at my hotel, I walk out the door, and I just know where to go, right? Ah, there's a bunch of restaurants right over here. There's places I can walk right over there. There's a neighborhood I don't want to go to right over there. Like, it guides me, and I'm instantly in with, all. Well, here's a bunch of restaurants, I just have to choose one. And here's some activities, I'll just do one. And, like, it, like it, it just pushes you. But Managua, in my opinion, and, and maybe other people have had very different experiences, but my experience is so much that... If you don't have a goal every time you're there, it's easy to flounder. Maybe that's the best way to put it. When I'm in Managua now, I know, okay, I'm here because I got to go shopping for this thing. So I have specific food shopping goals or I have specific, uh, you know, hardware shopping goals, uh, furniture shopping goals, whatever. So I know I'm going to places. And long before I go, I fantasize about some food that I want and I look up one or two restaurants that I want to hit when I'm there. And so when I get there, I'm immediately going out to, okay, here's a restaurant I'm really interested in. We're hitting that right now. Oh, here's this other place. We're going to get that for dinner. And we just, you know, and so you know where you're going. And whether I'm driving or you got a taxi driver, you, you have a spot to go. You don't, you're not just wandering around going, ah, what am I, what am I looking for? Because everything's hidden in plazas. Everything's in, you know, a little neighborhood off the beaten path. Everything's really far from each other. And that can be really challenging if you don't have a firm direction to take you in. So at the end of the day, I think that Managua is a hidden gem kind of city. It has a lot to offer and it doesn't get the credit that it deserves. But I also think that if you come to Nicaragua and it's your first experience and you start in Managua, you take on a very real risk that you're going to become disenchanted or frustrated with Managua and not be able to appreciate it for the place that it is. I think that it's better for someone who has a good scope of Nicaragua and then explores Managua and says, you know what, I, I get how it works now. And then you can make a really good decision of if it works for you. It's definitely a city with character, and it is a city for characters. You need to be a very special personality to choose Managua. Of course, if you're Nicaraguan, it's going to be the main place you go because it's what has the majority of the jobs and opportunities and nightlife, and a lot of your friends probably live there, especially if you're younger. When you're older, you're more likely to move back out to the support cities or the villages, as is common in any country. But as an expat, I think that it is a unique opportunity and and one of just many options within the country. And if you're coming for the first time, let me recommend Granada and Leon are definitely the two starter cities where you're going to have your best results just discovering what Nicaragua means to you and having an easy time branching out and seeing the countryside, small villages, attractions, other cities, and a great launching point for heading into Managua and saying, okay, I can do this, but I need to ease into it. The last thing you want to do is get the shock of Managua, be struggling with it the whole time, and feel frustrated rather than getting to enjoy Nicaragua and easing your way into Managua and enjoying it for what it truly can be. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, as always, if you'd like to support the channel. And I got to say thank you so much. The, the amount of coffee that people have been buying me over the last week has just been incredible. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting the channel. It's clear that what we're doing here is, is touching people and, and people are uh, appreciating what we're doing. Um, you can support the channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That like Patreon, it comes directly to me and uh, it makes all this possible, helps support the work that we're doing here. And uh, of course, like, subscribe, watch another video, tell someone about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow.